Just want to talk about keeping busy in the Philippines because one of the biggest killers here is boredom. Um, when I say killers, it literally can be. Um, expats sometimes drink themselves to death over a period of time. Um, it's happened at least two or three times I know in my area that it's something that's extremely common uh, because people have too much time on their hands. Having too much time on your hands is a good thing if you know how to use the time. Um, but a lot of the time the expats can be up drinking from 10 a.m. and it's not a good thing. It's not a healthy thing and I'm not sure what drives people to get to that state. Um, but it's a, something severely wrong with it. And most of it is driven by actually having nothing to do. Um, so I thought I'd put this quick video together. Um, this is probably going to be faster than the other ones because I've already done three takes of this and I think it's too long. Um, first thing is networking with other expats. I would generally do it and recommend it person to person. Uh, Meet the people in, meet the people, learn how, uh, talk to them, find out the people actually get on with. Um, you'll filter out maybe 90% of the people. Um, not because you're so fussy, but the fact is there's so many people here um, that wouldn't fit into your normal social groups. So sometimes you you filter out people extremely quickly. Um, so you, you get your hub of friends, meet regularly. Um, but also try to do it where it's not sitting around the bar somewhere. <coughs> try to do it, you know, like coffee shops, things like that. And, and around events which are actually um, worth making an effort for. Um, you know, uh, poker nights, uh, football, um, going around each other's house for dinner, that sort of stuff. You know, the, the usual social stuff that you may do in the West, but sometimes they get forgotten here. Um, there's things like green bowls in Seagull as well as um, tempting bowling and then you've got things like cinema and things like that to keep occupied but like I said these are all social things which need a mix of um, locals as well as expats to, to make them function properly um, going to the resorts is something we do now and again uh, because we, you know, the cheap and the easy access, and it's easy to find a resort that's central to everybody. But sometimes that can be a bit negative because people can start drinking this, uh, early. Um, I say it's a bit of an issue because I think it's one of the big problems that expats face in the Philippines is alcohol is cheap and too accessible, and many people suffer with it. Um, but like I said, that primarily seems to come from the border factor because uh, a lot of time people plan to move here and have great ideas on what they're going to do and where they're going to go and then they get here and something happens or they realize they can't afford to do what they really wanted to do. Um, either way, it ends up in a, a negative thing. So, try, like I said, try and revolve things around things that don't involve alcohol. Um, the next thing is things like reading. As you can see, we're, we're a strong believer in reading here. Um, this is one of our bookcases. We actually have, um, I don't know, is it four or five? Wait, we've got at least, I'd say at least four or five hundred books plus at least a thousand e-books. Um, what I'm trying to do at the moment is encourage a book club where you bring a book and take a book, or bring three books, take three books. Um, it encourages local learning, but also for expats, it means we can swap our books and um, everyone gets to read at a very low price, free. Um, it's one of the things I enjoy myself. I, know, I mean, you probably didn't notice on the bottom there is a lot of the classics um, because we actually bought a lot of them um, to try and encourage more cultured reading. Um, what else can I talk about on this? Yeah, so reading is a good thing, but also further education. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do from remote. Um, 
remote college training, but also there's a lot of stuff that's free online, um, like web program, web development and stuff like that. You can learn online from a lot of free websites. Um, you don't have to be spending a small fortune on uh, getting the, the books you want, you, uh, sorry, getting a degree. Because let's face it, if you're, if you're here and you're like 60, do you really need that diploma? The answer is no, you just want to know how to do it. And that's why I, I would say look for things that you actually enjoy doing or want to do. Um, photography is one of mine. Uh, I haven't had time to actually do it, the training courses I have for it, but it is something that's on the cards because not only that, I actually would recommend doing photography here because there's a lot of stuff you can see. Um, sea life wise, if you do go diving, um, Philippines has some amazing sea life. It's not as good as it used to be. Do the dynamite fishing and cyanide fishing, but get away from where the populations are. Um, there's some amazing stuff to see, and that sort of ties in diving with uh, photography. But diving also comes at a price. The same with deep sea fishing. Um, they're not cheap things to do because the tourists do it. So the tourists do it. You pay tourist prices unless you know people in the industry or people that own their own boats, etc. So they're not always easy accessible, but photography just involves a camera and you can take that from a couple of hundred dollars um, to thousands, uh, depending on what your interest is and what you want to take photos of. Um, so photography is something I would recommend. It is something that you can improve on even with the cheapest of cameras. So that's probably one of the ones that I, I recommend. Like I said, it's something I enjoy myself, so I'm a bit biased on photography. Um, I do spend a fair bit of money on my cameras, but at the same time, um, I actually need to stop spending money on the cameras and spend more time on learning how to use the stuff I already own. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to the UK, for example, because my father's pretty good with the camera and I'll be picking his brain next time I'm back. Also messing around with some of his rather expensive lenses. Um, but yeah, cameras, photography is pretty good. Wildlife on land isn't as good as it used to be because a lot of the stuff's been eaten. Um, but also the pollution and the construction of things like concrete buildings has removed some of the uh, animal population. What I would say there's plenty of is bugs. Um, you can find like centipedes, millipedes, um, spiders, small spiders, huge spiders. Um, and, and there's like these bizarre things that happen. You have these like bugs which are like this size, like, um, what did I see something? Yeah, a stick insect, uh, praying mantis. There was about the size of the tip here, a tiny, tiny bit. At the same time, I've seen uh, prey, ma prey mantises this size. There's like um, such a diverse amount of bugs and things here that you can take pictures of. And some of them are, even the mosquito work is quite an interesting thing for a photograph. But the, the interesting thing I found with the, the different sizes of uh, bugs, like the ants, you get ants so small that you struggle to see them. You can feel them biting you, but you, can't, you struggle to see them. Um, but then you got these other ones which are about an inch long, which seem to have like advanced uh, intelligence compared to the smaller ones. Um, you know, like if you tap the table, it can sense it, and you can see it as if it's almost looking at you. <laughs> I find them quite amusing when I'm completely bored and looking for something to do, just to go out and spend some time looking for things on the the plants and what the ants are up to. Um, but yeah. Photography is a great thing to do here. Um, people is one of the best things you can get here for photographs. But what I would recommend is getting a strap and trying not to take pictures of people while they're looking. Um, why are they going to get offended and punch you? The answer is no. You're more likely to get these random poses that people do for photography. Um, it's very hard to get people to do things naturally, like a, like a market vendor doing their market stuff. Um, I try to take a, 
use a, um, a 300 lens, so that I'm a bit further away, so by the time they've noticed me, I've already took their photo. Because I've had people recognize me in tinted, a tinted uh, car um, as a foreigner. And people seem to see, like, x-ray vision, there's a foreigner over there. And when they, when they spot you and then spot the camera, it's like, uh, take my picture, you know, picture me. And <laughs> it, 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 photography is not about posing. It's about catching people naturally. <laughs> so it's very hard to do. Um, when they, when you're next to people, because they try they try to get their picture taken, um, but that's part of the fun. Um, one of the things I do like, and I don't recommend everybody does it, but um, I like taking photos from the back of a motorbike um, because you can catch things as they're moving. You see a lot more. It's just it's just good fun. Um, it's a hobby. It's something I enjoy doing. Um, it's something I recommend doing, something you can um, develop here because you can develop your skill but also you can get some huge pictures um, which aren't too expensive. Um, also the digital media these days means it's easy to um, become a photographer. Uh, what I mean is you can print photos or you can sit and look through a thousand photos and say well 900 of them are crap and just delete them where before you have to print them all off. Um, so yeah, photography is a great one. It's cheap and it's good fun. You have to be into it, obviously. But uh, what else is it? Um, kayaking and other stuff like that, water sports. Um, it's all accessible, uh, but I recommend buying your own if you know how to do it. Uh, I, I'm not going to cover it too much because I don't know. I don't own a boat. I don't um, know people that can go through how do you buy a boat, how do you license it, blah, 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 because I don't do it. Um, I do have friends with boats that for diving and things, uh, but I've never gone over that topic. It's just the fact is I know they have um, regular diving off, off, the, off the coast. But, yeah, I mean, the thing we, the reason I say build it is A, labor's cheap, and B, um, if you build it, you're not going to be paying horrendous fees that are tailor-made for the tourists. <coughs> and you can take it when you want. Um, but just don't be excessive. Don't think, oh, I'm going to build a yacht, uh, when all you need is actually um, a small dinghy. I mean, it, it's just it's more fun in the dinghy, to be honest, than, than a yacht, because they, cause you can do it yourself. It's, it's funny. Um, it's fun. Um, I've done a bit of yachting myself when I was younger, but yeah, keep it in a, keep it in a sensible budget, I, you could, I mean, you could finish a dinghy within a couple of weeks, but if you built a yacht, it could take a couple of years, um, but yeah, it's moving away from anything that involves alcohol, um, because that's primarily where a lot of the downfall is for a lot of expats, it's too much time, um, which revolves around cheap alcohol, and it all comes back to being bored. Um, there's enough to do here. I mean, I, I like motorcycling. Um, I go, you know, when I get time, I mean, I do, I go on my bike wherever I can, but um, when I get time, I like to travel around. Uh, my wife's not too keen on it because she, she prefers me to travel with another rider in case something happens. But <laughs> it, it's something that you can not only get to see more of the country because if you're inside a bus or something you're you know you're crushed up but you, the fact is with a bike you can actually um get into areas buses can you can go up into the mountains the bus won't go up some of these trails because the the roads have been washed away at the same time um with traveling generally you can get a bus dirt cheap uh, bus ticket um, and go island to island. Accommodations, they're cheap for staying in a place anyway. So, I mean, if you actually planned a tour or going around um, the islands, it's not going to break the bank. Um, like I said, especially if you use a bus, because like I said before, everything is on this multi-tier system where there's poor and rich. So, if you're on the bus, you're at the poor level, 
So, which means your cost of living is cheap. But you can also pick the high level stuff when you want. You know, like you can stay in a little bamboo hut on the beach, or you can stay in a five star hotel. Well, probably not five star, but you you know you get what I mean. Uh, you cheap transport and then get a good hotel or cheap hotel, good food, whatever. You know, they, everything's available. Because uh, you gotta remember, people commute around here anyway, so you know it's always a constant flow of traffic, people coming and going, and so there's always something available. <coughs> Accommodation-wise, I'm sure you could find somewhere in every single town if you need to. Um, for an overnight stay, because people generally are pretty cool here. Um, <laughs> the cheapest place I stayed was 60 pence a night. Um, not the most comfortable lodgings, but it did have a bed, uh, bathroom facility, shower, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was okay. Uh, it's not something I, it's not somewhere I stayed twice, but you know, generally if you're tired, if you're tired and just want to sleep, um, for us, we had an airsoft tournament the next day, which struggled to sleep there because there's so many bugs. Um, but that's another thing, airsoft. Airsoft is probably the biggest sport in the Philippines, or it has the, it's probably got the largest number of players on the planet. Um, it, it basically involves um, replica guns that fire BB shot at each other. Um, and every town has an airsoft team somewhere. Um, they're not going to be in an official capacity, but they'll exist. And the thing with that, there's plenty of tournaments around the country. You can travel with it. Um, you can keep fit with it because running around in tropical heat, shooting at each other with um, basic uh, body armor sort of stuff, it's heavy, it's sweaty, it's good fun. Um, I enjoy it. It's just that I should have got back to it a couple of years back. Um, I've been so busy though. Um, what else is there? Start your own blog. Starting your own blog actually has two sides to it because A, you learn how to blog, but B, you actually learn to find things to write about. So you might actually start going out a bit more or looking for stuff to do um, that you might have not done before because quite simply, You've got more of an interest in doing it. Um, oh, sorry, you've got a reason to do it because people read your blog. So that's another uh, tick on, you know, box to tick is learning to blog and filling in some of the gaps. See, the big thing I I find that expats should really do is just do one huge blog, um, which is mapped out where people are. Um, because I think that's actually more interesting than individual blogs. Because if I'm going to pack a load, I would actually want to just click and hear from a guy that's actually there, uh, what's, what's his experience with there. Um, what else can I say? It's ma basically making yourself busy is the important thing. Um, if you're going to come here and retire, I, if you don't keep active, you're going to get bored very quickly. And it's not very healthy. Uh, so think about it before you even come here, because you might actually have to send some stuff to yourself. Because um, I, I generally send stuff from the UK to myself here, um, because there's so many things that are missing. Um, the it's just a nightmare. Um, what I mean is, like for example, camera equipment. A lot of the stuff I want would be difficult to have. Um, I may be able to get it in Manila, uh, which is a flight away, and then again, I might not get it there. At the same time, I could probably get it ordered from Canon, but at the same time, it's probably going to be 20% cheaper in the UK when I'm there, or 30% cheaper or more, 30, 50% cheaper if I bought it from the US. Um, when I've got a friend coming in from there. So a lot of stuff that you might want to do uh, for whatever you're going to be doing, I'd recommend doing before you arrive, or at least assessing if you can get the stuff here readily or not. Um, and that's my video for today. Um, thanks for watching.